What's up fam, it's Wilson, also known as Designed by Will. And in today's video, I'm honestly learning as well as trying to teach you guys. And I'm learning from a video from Texture Labs actually. Texture Labs has some amazing videos on Photoshop blending and actually getting into Photoshop myself like four or five years ago, I did watch a lot of Texture Labs videos at the beginning. So the typography I'm gonna be using is called Wrap Script, Wrap Script, and that's gonna be the type, uh, the primary typography. For the subheading or the revision branding name, the typography I'm gonna be using is Engage. And I feel like these have a very high contrast between the looks of them, which is gonna be very crucial in design because you wanna have a focal point for your graphic. And the focal point for this graphic is gonna be the Hellrider. Revision is just going to be secondary because we want this to be primarily about the design rather than the brand itself. So you would see this on like a clothing hanger and be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Now I'm just going in with a simple warp options in Illustrator and just warping it real quick. And that's basically it. Now we're just going to pop this into Photoshop. Unsurprisingly, the first time I did this, it crashed and I was so heartbroken because I forgot to save it. So please, while you guys watch the video from Texture Labs or this video, make sure you're pressing Command Save, even manually, to ensure that you can save what you're up to on that selective part. Now, I won't be doing a full breakdown of this 3D type because if I do, it's gonna take 40 minutes because it literally took me 40 minutes for a 20 minute video. So I recommend you guys just go watch that video by Texture Labs, like I said before, and follow along. For the rest of this, I'm just gonna put this on fast forward just so you guys can see the process. Now, the reason why I selected blue and white is because I've been using a lot of um, reds. And this design ends up being purple anyway, so this doesn't really matter. Um, I just wanted to work in this color because I thought these colors looked really nice. So once I had the design rendered out in itself and I made the layers for the adjustments and breakdowns, um, I started doing some effects and all I did was I just copied the video with um, making the separate um, entities for the actual type and making those separate masks, sorry, and then bringing in some textures just from Unsplash that I added to the actual type in itself um just to make it a little bit more grunge and you can't really see the detail in the type once i start doing the other effects but it was a really good video honestly like i can't recommend that video enough um and there's no point in me just recreating someone else's video because it is a really good video and i highly recommend it honestly so yeah after getting this 3d type or breakdown of this 3d type um, I wanted to see what it would look like with some other effects, just some blurs and stuff like that, just playing around with it before I dragged it into this new document. Now this document is 2400 by 2700 at 300 DPI roughly, and that's what I usually work in for like t-shirt graphics, or 3000 by 3000 um, at 3000 by 3000 pixels. This is all pixels by the way, at 300 DPI also. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're just going to be cutting out our actual motorcycle dude. And this is a very complex shape, you would say. So it did take a little while. I hate cutting out objects and the simple direct selection or lasso selection tool just isn't cutting it for me. No pun intended. So, yeah. For wheels and stuff like that, I tend to use a shape. So I'll get the round or oval selection tool create a shape and then play around with that to make a more cleaner cutout of like bike tires and stuff like that especially car tires um, and since this is moving it's a little bit warped so it was really annoying um, but yeah that's how i clean up rounded objects with selection tools once we got that all cleaned up, we're just going to add in the skull. And since the background is black, it's going to be really easy to use the lasso selection tool. So I'm just going to press select image or select focal point. 
and then press Q to see if I need to do any editing and I didn't have to. So yeah, that's it. Convert that to a smart object. Once we got that scale it down and you got it how you want it to look like, um, just going to right click and press warp. And then this is where the fun is. You're just going to uh, get these little anchor points and warp it to make it look like the skull is facing the direction in which the dude's face is also facing. Sorry, that's a lot of faces, but you get what I mean. The one thing about Photoshop is you want to make it look like it's not Photoshopped. So yeah. And with this graphic, since we're going to be adding heavy textures onto it, making these perfect is not the crucial point because you'll spend a lot of time. The thing is just to make it look okay and then hide it later with all the effects. So the next thing we're going to do is just make a mask and then go in with the black and white paintbrush and clean it up to make it look like the skull is in the actual helmet. And by lowering the opacity down by around, I would say 80%, it makes it a lot easier. And then I just made a simple layer underneath that and filled that in with like this dark, like dark, sorry, dark gray um, to make the premise of the actual floating skull head. We're not going to add any skeleton bones into the actual rest of the body um, just because I'm feeling fairly lazy and I'm just honestly practicing in Photoshop. Next, we're just going to grab some fire PNGs and we're going to be applying the same effects that we did to the face to the actual fire in itself. So just making a duplicate because we're going to be using this fire a lot to scale it down and then just right click and start warping it to suit where you want it to be blended into. Um, and now this is just honestly up to personal preference and looking at um, if it looks right or not. Since this is a spinning wheel, I just thought having it curved the direction of the wheel made more sense than anything, honestly. And I'm gonna be taking the direction of the actual bike and using the fire to follow the direction of the bike. So it makes a little bit more sense. So next, we're just gonna get the same fire PNG that we have, and we're just gonna recreate the same directional burning onto the rest of the actual person on the motorbike to make it look more believable. After you got the composite how you want it to look, you're going to grab a clipping mask onto certain garments or certain parts of the actual person on the motorbike. Um, use just a simple brush with the color of the flame to create some sort of highlights and shadows. Something like this doesn't have to be too complicated. Um, but yeah, we're going to be hiding that later on with the textures. So don't focus too much on that. To add to it, I'm just gonna add a inner shadow just to make it look like uh, some highlights without having to go in and actually add the highlights individually myself. This is a very lazy way. Like I said before, we're gonna be hiding most of this stuff once we start adding textures. So I'm not really focusing on making this picture perfect. You're gonna have something that looks like this roughly um, if you keep playing with it. Like I said before, this is even doing too much because we're gonna be hiding most of it. After you have your guy or whatever object that you have, your focal point lit up how you want it to look like, you're just going to want to add in some sort of foreground and background to make it look like it's not floating in space. Um, and usually with brands like uh, Harley Davidson and stuff like that, they use like forest themes and they'll usually be um, framing the actual design. But in this case, we're not focusing too much on that. So I've just placed a simple dirt background onto the floor and used a mask to cut that out um, and also just cut out a little house from like an old vintage poster and added some sort of pathway to that and we're just going to be blending those together using some brushes and making it look more vintage like and then adding shadows to the bottom of the actual design just to bring everything together. 
lastly we're just going to add a little glowing to the bottom of the actual um, floor just because i realized that shadows wouldn't make sense if the bike was lighting up from the wheels it'll be glowing and then we're just going to be grabbing a brush and placing it onto the parts where the fire is on the actual person just on top and that's going to be our glowing layer to make some sort of glowing fire effect now this layer doesn't have to be too perfect you're going to simply want to set the blending mode to screen to have that like glowing effect you can go in and add in a darker color to make it more like concentrated where the fire source is coming from and then have a lighter color going out towards the background but like i said before not really needed um, and I'm just adding a little bit more glow to the actual bike in itself to make it look more believable Like I said, take your time if you have to and like just edit around it And that's basically our primary composite completed I just want to add a skull to the background and I end up actually really loving the skull rather than the actual focal point um, But yeah, that's what happens in design. You never know until you actually start looking at stuff But yeah, all I did was group all the layers that included the bike person together and then i just added a outer glow to finally complete this whole biker glowing man look inspired by marvel's character ghost rider for the rest of the design um, of this actual skull is just going to be us recreating the skull on the biker person but making it more blown up so I'm going in with this lasso selection tool to make a sort of selection around the eyes. And this is meant to be changing the actual sculpture's face or the skeleton's face in sort of a way. So it's just not a plain skull. And I've used this before on, on like bigger scale projects. And I obviously go in and add in more highlights and details to make it look more believable. But just for the sake of this, I just went in really rough as you guys can see but it adds a lot to the actual characteristic of the design once you start blending it in with the fire and using those highlight features that we did previously. All in, it should look something like this if we're following the same steps and recreating the look on the face on this bigger scale. The design looks like it's still floating in space so to make sure we get rid of that we're just going to grab a smoke brush from just simply brush easy scale it down and use it to create some sort of background or frame for the design in itself and i talked about this on my first video actually talking about how to make a bootleg vintage t-shirt and how to frame your design on a graphic um, shirt so it doesn't look like it's just floating or you have a, some sort of random um, item or object just on a t-shirt 
after getting all the designs ready, all you want to do is group the individual layers and we're going to be coloring them using um, the adjustment layer, hue and saturation. Just so it's easier for us to just go back and change stuff if we have to. And this way we don't have to use any blending modes or anything like that. We're going straight to the hue and we're just trying to adjust it to match sort of the gradient of blue within the type. And we're going to be applying this to the full design um, individually. So the hue and saturation is not going to be over the whole design since there's already blue in the actual title. If we end up putting everything underneath the same color of blue, it's going to end up looking really weird. So yeah, depending on how much folders you have is the amount of um, hues you should have. Like I've done here, I've just honestly created a folder, put a hue and saturation, match the hue and saturation to each of the designs like I just did for the background of the house. Like I said, there is easier ways of doing this, but since I already made the title and it's in between all the layers, a certain color, I can't just put a hue and saturation mask over everything without having to create a separate layer mask to cut out the, the type, which I find very annoying. Um, and after looking at it, it looked cool, but I ended up changing the color to purple. And the way I did that was I just grouped everything, but that wasn't until I started playing with the actual design to make it more suited to the aspect ratio of a t-shirt. I just felt like it was too squashed together. So this was the final color that I ended up going with. And I just, like before, I put everything together in a group once we got all the blues right and how we wanted them and use a different hue and saturation to get to this nice purple. Now we're gonna make a duplicate of those layers and convert them to a smart object go to pixelate and then color halftone set that color halftone to four and press ok now we've got the premise to start actually making this vintage ripped look next we're going to go to the filter gallery you're going to want to select the conte crayon and you're going to want to set the background levels to around one and play with the scaling to all the way around 62 and relief around that 15 mark. Um, like I said before, just play around with this to get how you want it to look like and press OK until you get the look that you wanna go with. Like I said before, I keep going back and forth with the scaling and stuff like that because the scaling will adjust how big the actual rips in the paper are and the depth of them and the foreground levels is gonna change the color make sure you guys follow along because there was a jump in the timeline if you looked at the design before where it's almost finished and you go back here it doesn't look as complete so just follow the timeline guys next we're simply going to add a curve and bring up the end point to make the blacks a little bit more gray and vintage and washed out a little bit because we're going to add the blacks in later using a texture Grab any sort of black texture and put it on top. Set the blending mode to overlay. And once you set it to overlay, it's going to bring some of those blacks in. I know that was a very bumpy two minutes because there was a huge switch because I originally picked pencil sketch and it didn't look good. So I went back and clicked the contour thing, but I forgot to record it again. And I couldn't record it again because I already saved it. So there was no point. I just jumped back between the timelines. But yeah, hopefully you guys were able to follow along with me. Now that you got that done, all you have to do is just add some highlights to the actual typography. So it matches the shininess of that chrome look. And add a sort of grunge texture on top. And the design is complete. But you can leave it just like this to keep it clean. Add it to a mock-up and it's either ready to sell or send to a manufacturer but that'll be different because you need to make a tech pack etc now i'm not putting this to print so i'm just adding it to a physical garment mock-up rather than the tech pack because when you send it to a tech pack you're putting it to print you can send mock-ups like this to a manufacturer but i prefer the vector mock-ups and the vector tech pack because it's easier to communicate 
Um, one thing that I did like see once I finished the design was revision is not censored and I could just go back and cut it out in the design and center it but you live and you learn that's gonna be it for today i love you guys i'll see you guys when i see you hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new maybe with blending options or even you checked out the video on how to make this 3d type from texture labs enjoy the rest of your weekend guys love you peace